on our first decent snow day. We're supposed to get about a foot. We're kind of close to it now. Um, I have the Ego 28-inch battery-operated snowblower. I've got several of their other tools. This is new this year. This is the first time that I'm going to use a snowblower, and um, it's after the first week in January. So winters have been strange here the last several years, but we have a good snowfall. Now, this video may or may not be longer than what I usually make, and I'm not making this for entertainment. It's for people like I was that were thinking about getting a snowblower, wondering whether they should, if it was going to be the biggest mistake they ever made, or if it was going to be the most wonderful thing. Um, and you can find people blowing snow and telling you what they like and telling you, oh, it's a beast. Um, but what is it really? So... I am planning on giving you numbers. I have this whole place mapped out for square footage. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. We're going to take a look at the depth of snow. Um, right now, it's about 10 to 12 inches. It's hard to tell because it's been blowing. And um, it's a, a packed but light snow. It's very cold. It's about 20 degrees, which makes for a light, fluffy snow. Um, I've got two 12 amp batteries. <clears throat> I've got a 28 inch uh, electric snow blower. And um, I have a watch that keeps accurate time and turns on and off with my voice so that I am going to stop and start the timer only when I have to move the camera around or something like that, not when I'm just backing up and then continuing. But for any lengthy time that I stop the blower, I'm gonna stop the watch. So we'll have an exact run time we're going to show you how much of the battery is left at the end. At the end, um, hopefully, you'd be able to extrapolate what your results might be. Because everybody's driveway is different shape, different size, different length, different roughness. Um, and uh, maybe it'll help you decide whether you want to get one of these now. Now, even before I try this out, my expectations are that it'll actually perform quite well. Perform as good as my 10 horsepower Aaron's, which is right back there. And it's 23 years old and it's been a stellar machine. So that is being sort of put out to pasture as a backup. Um, and <clears throat> is this something you should get? I can tell you right now that there are good reasons to get it. And there are good reasons out there where some of you should not get it. Of course, it's all my opinion, for whatever it's that worth, but at the end, we'll talk about that, and we'll give you everything that happened, and I'll stop talking now, because there's going to be enough snow and blowing to do, and I can narrate this afterwards when I produce the footage and start working with it on the computer. So, let's get started. My snow blowing needs aren't just linear. It's a patchwork of areas that add up to quite a bit. And the areas that I have to blow are fairly rough. I have a crush rock area. I have a rough driveway. Um, I have my scraper blade up one half inch so I won't break any shear pins. And I'm not too worried about a super clean job. This is in a suburban neighborhood with a nice, straight, smooth, flat driveway. Once I come out of the garage, I'll hit this 240 foot square area. It's not hard to do, um, but uh, and I don't do it right away. This area where I park the truck, and this area is crushed rock. Why don't I park my truck in my garage? Because every time I buy a vehicle, it gets to be a few inches taller. The last vehicle I was able to park back here was my last one, and it was a Chevy Silverado. This one won't fit, hence the Rhino Shelter. I like to take this long 90-foot section of banking parallel. I have to do two, three, or four trips back and forth depending on how big it is 
that goes across beyond my neighbor's driveway and across my driveway and across the area in front of the garage. The reason I start so early is to take the baking out for my neighbor so when he finally gets here, because uh, he doesn't live here, it won't be solid ice and it makes a good sweep for the um, mail person to drive their truck in and um, get to the mailbox. This is the largest section. This is my actual driveway. It looks rough and it is a little bit, but right now it's just wet in the picture. Um, it's a little over a thousand uh, square feet um, and it has a dip on the end, which um, can be a little bit of a challenge to get up with a snowblower, particularly on the right hand side. Moving up from that is the slate covered path that goes to the steps to the house. Next, I do a walk up to my neighbor's driveway, a fairly long strip with quite a bit square footage. Um, I go right up to uh, almost his door so he can uh, get in uh, when he comes down to clear his driveway and so that I can cut a path over to my patio. The patio is 228 square feet, and if I don't have to shovel it, I'd rather not. So having this access up to it and being able to come over with the snowblower is definitely a plus. Next is this rough area that goes along the side of the house. I have to clear off an area in front of the trash cans, move up to the front patio by the water, and then clear that off and, of course, come back advertising says that this blower with the 12 amp batteries will clear a driveway that will hold 32 cars. I don't know if that's ideal conditions. They say it's eight inches, probably eight inches of fluffy snow in a very narrow driveway. So I looked up um, a kind of an average small car to keep it really conservative and chose a Honda Civic, which has a length of 15 feet and a width of about five feet. And I put them together side by side and came up with this length for a driveway and width, which is a pretty skinny driveway. So here is the depiction of the cars, bumper to bumper, by the way, very conservatively done. And you can see that it's 3,840 square feet. The area that I have to clear snow off from is 2,306 square feet quite a bit less than what they claim this will do. If you look at the black line on the bottom part of the diagram and the left side of it, that is the area that my clearing is. So what I'm hoping is that Ego has done this correctly in depicting how much snow that they will be able to clear with two 12 amp batteries. And if I should get some deeper snow, some wet or heavier snow, that buffer that I have will take care of it and I'll be able to do pretty much any snowfall that I get. Here in Maine, snow can be like this or it can be like this. In some years, it's more one of the other. In some years, it's a whole lot of one. This is what they're calling for in this snowstorm. I am periodically planning on flashing the auger and drive settings on the screen. It'll look something like this, and you'll see a number on each one to show what the setting is. I'm starting off with drive and the impeller speed on the lowest settings, but I soon found out that I needed to move a little faster. So I turned the setting up to two, and that seemed just about right for almost all of the rest of the blowing. As you heard, this is my crush rock area. 
and I can hear them flying all over the place. Uh, not something I like, but it's in, sort of inevitable. This is the area where I go parallel to the driveways and the garage. It's a long area and I take out the banking of the plow made. They haven't done too much plowing yet, so the banking is small. I'll have to come out and do it again later or tomorrow. strong wind blowing everything in my face, but the blizzard is still going. There's still snow in the air and it's going to end sometime this evening. At this point, I decided to see what it would do wide open, so I turned the impeller and auger to its fullest. It threw the snow up about telephone pole height and I had it going straight up instead of over. I'm sure it would have thrown it quite a distance to the left had I uh, adjusted the chute. I've come up the driveway and I'm working on the walkway that goes between the driveway and the steps. At this point, I am started going up my neighbor's driveway, which is a long stretch, so I can get to cut across my patio to do that. my patio and I'm going up the side of the house to the front of it to do the front patio step. I've tilted the chute down to try to keep some of the snow from blowing back on me.
this is a large rear patio and it drops down about three inches to another level. So I have to do that, put it in reverse, and then back up over that hump. And I'm glad to see that it came over quite well. As you can see for almost all of this video, I've had the drive setting um, on two and the auger on eco on its lowest setting. And it throws the snow just about right. Now I've saved this last area for last. This is the garage that I came out of and I don't park the cars here if you remember. But if my batteries had died, I didn't need this done right away. I can get the truck out, I can get into the driveway, and I can get into the house. This is my last thing that I need done. And one more thing before we go inside, because my camera is almost dead. Batteries out of five bars still have three left. It's the next morning. The sun's out. It's still 20 degrees. Um, but um, yesterday it was getting dark. It was very cold. And I decided to, to go in. Um, even though it wasn't completely cleared out because I was still snow blowing in the middle of a blizzard even though it was about over. So I need to come out this morning and clean up a little bit. Um, okay, this unit. First of all, um, you know the square footage I did and you know what the battery um, life was like. I used two out of five bars so each bar equals 20%. So I might have used 40% of the battery. Now, that last, that the three bars were lit, but one of them might have been at the beginning of it or the end of it. And if it was just about to go out, I could have used almost 60%. So I used someplace between 40 and 60% of the battery which means that I had some place between 40 and 60 percent left um, which was amazing to me because the time that they were actually on and running was 54 minutes so I used up less than half the batteries in 54 minutes so it's possible they could have gone a couple of hours. Um, my hopes of maybe having enough juice in each battery um, was, I was blown away by the idea that, that I had that much left. I expected to use the whole thing and hopefully make it. Um, so this was very impressive. Now, I ran the blower almost exclusively in eco mode, but I know how wide my road is. I know how wide the driveway is. And I'm getting an easy 15 feet of throw on the lowest setting. On the highest setting, it's supposed to go 60 feet. But the lowest setting was easily. I only, only turned it up one notch a couple of times when I need to throw it across the road. 
Um, as far as the speed is concerned, I started it off on lowest speed and it was a little slow. Turning it up to the second notch out of the four was just right. It moved just right through the snow. Even when I hit heavy snow, it pushed through. Uh, speaking of that, these really wide eight inch wide 16 inch tires with the deep treads really bit well better than than the uh the errands i have which have good tires but they're a little bit rounded <laughs> and these are very squat flat they're square on the side so performance wise it was very good the chute was very nice going back and forth it swung to the left swung to the right really fast which is where i mostly have it one side or the other Getting in line someplace in between was a little a little harder. And the auger speed is adjustable. On a gas blower, you start the engine, and let's say you run at three quarters or, or full speed, which is what I do. That is how fast the auger is going. Whenever you push this handle down, it's full tilt. So if your snow blower blows 40 feet, 50 feet, that's how far the snow is going to go. And you control it by controlling the angle of the chute so that it's coming out full tilt. But if you don't want it to go as far, like into the neighbor's driveway, you have to tilt it down. With this, it's a little bit different. You want it coming out enough to get the snow where you want to. So you actually turn the speed of the auger and the impeller down and mostly keep this at a 45 degree angle which any physics students know is the optimal angle for a ballistic thing so it's going to go the first at about 45. you tilt it down doesn't go as far you tilt it higher and it goes up and then comes down on top of you so i keep this at about 45 degree angle and i adjust the speed to get it where i want to so it's saving battery but still getting it where i want to go when I need to have it shoot just six feet, I put uh, the speed of the of the um, impeller on low, and then I have to tilt this down. But it's different from a gas blower in that it's coming up full tilt in that, but in the electric, electric, you want to keep the impeller going as low as possible to save battery. And it's low, you know, for me, the low speed of the impeller is more than enough i'm either running at that speed or tilting the angle down to make it to make it not throw as far the speed of the wheels is very good on the setting of two um the reverse there are three settings you just put it in third because it's slow enough going backwards in third i don't even know why they have a one and two it's it, that's really slow now let's talk about this blower as far as having value should you get an electric? Should you get a gas blower? And there's lots of thoughts on this for me. And they're, they're my opinions. So, you know, be gentle with me if, if, yours, if yours are different in the comments. But definitely express what you think. I have a 23-year-old Aaron's 10-horsepower snowblower. I've never done a repair on it. I change the oil. It's had three plugs, and I grease it. That's it. Um, it'll probably not need any repairs because it's not going to run much from now on. So when I thought, okay, I need something new or something else because I need to be able to get out here, and if my snowblower ever goes belly up, I'm in trouble, and it's old. So I had a choice of the electric or gas. Now, the reason I chose the electric was because I kind of wanted to. I have some of their other tools. They're pretty cool. There's no maintenance. You just, like, throw batteries in and go. Um, and when the 28-inch came out with the 12-amp 12 12 batteries, I, um, I jumped on it. But I considered a new snowblower, either Aaron's or some other brand. When I, I've been following snowblower pages on Facebook for quite a while now. And I know that people are always posting issues so that that's all you see is issues, no matter what you're doing, even, even on the ego page, because that's what people need help with. But I also noticed that a lot of people with two, three, four, five-year-old blowers um, 
seem to have some issues that, that uh, I've never experienced and that I wouldn't want. Some people after two, three, four, five years are replacing friction discs, belts. Um, they're complaining about a lot of rust. After about 2016, depending on the brand, um, they started using Chinese engines, which have been problematic in some instances. And then they started going with the EFI, electronic fuel injection, which I think is a great idea, but for some reason, people seem to be having some trouble with them. So I'm thinking that getting a new snowblower would have been okay, a new gas snowblower would have been okay, particularly since I have the backup. But I didn't want any problems with the snowblower. I just don't want to deal with that. I started looking at the electrics, and this is definitely a crapshoot. Okay, this is, I call it like Doc and Back to the Future. This is a science experiment. And I have the resources to be able to get one. And I do have the resources that if this should be a problem, and I need to rethink it, keep my old one, but rethink this, I could back up, punt, and get something else. When I'm talking with with some young people and, and some people in the family and so forth, um, I don't know what to tell them because I'm thinking that getting a new gasoline snowblower and something like this, you're taking a chance both ways. With a gasoline one, it's like a known, known, that makes any sense. Like we, we, we have a history of them, even with the newer ones, and we know that there could be some issues. With this one, it's kind of an unknown in that we're hoping for the best, but we really don't know because they haven't been out that long, particularly this model. It's only this year. So you're kind of taking your chances. So what would I have done otherwise if I decided not to get this? Would I have gotten a new snowblower and have that one as a backup? I probably wouldn't have done that because I do not want the hassle of possibly having to get this to a repair place or to repair it myself, which I do a lot. I probably would have gone back and searched for a well cared for blower that's either an Aaron's or maybe other good brand roughly pre 2016 before they put the Chinese engines in them. And if I could have found a really good one that had been really well cared for, that was pre-2009, I might have gotten one of those because they had the cast iron bore Tecumseh engines. Tecumseh or Briggs & Stratton, either one is fine. Um, but in 2009 and before that, they had a really, really good engine, which is like the one that's in mine. Mine has no rust. I'm kind of concerned about that. That's why I would have gone back too. So it's like having two cars. If they're both old, it doesn't matter. One's got to be working. Well, I feel the same way with the snowblowers. If someone has no snowblower at all and they have to get one and it has to be reliable and they don't have a chance to go back and punt and do it again. I mean, you know, they're going to spend some money and they can't do it twice. I probably would get a newer or at least a later model gas blower this like i said it's a science experiment it's fun seeing what it'll do but i'm not sure i would get it if it was going to be my sole blower and i had no other choice if something happened to it another consideration is cost over time with a gasoline engine snow blower You've got to do oil every year, a plug once in a while, and you got to grease it. And then you have to put gas in it. Okay, worst case scenario, you live in a place with a lot of snow. You're going to need a few gallons of gas. You got to, you know, you still have to do the maintenance on it. Um, it's going to cost you $40 a year. It could cost you as little as $20. let us say $30. Let's go in the middle. Over eight years, and I'll show you the reason why I'm choosing eight years right now. Over eight years, and you put 30 bucks a year into it, assuming there are no repairs in that time. Um, you know, that's 200 
and $40 to provide fuel and maintenance to the snowblower if you do the maintenance yourself. With an electric, there is very little to no maintenance. There's none of that, which is the convenience of it. It's like the leaf blower I have that is theirs and, and the chainsaw. You slap a battery in it, you go, then you put it back up on the shelf and that's it. There's no gas, there's no oil, there's no electric cords. <coughs> you don't have to think about getting ready to do the job, you just do it. And that's the drawer of these things. But these two 12 amp batteries, like I had said in a previous video I did, they are not the power source. The electricity in them is the power source. And compared to a gallon of gasoline, it's pennies on the dollar to charge them in comparison. But the battery itself is the gas tank, so to speak. Now, the reason I said eight years is these batteries and blower have a five-year warranty, and it's a good warranty. Ego, uh, you know, makes you see if uh, things are broken or not working as you think they might be, but in the end, they do replace them. These batteries could go 10 years. They're slated for that. I'm thinking seven or eight years might be what I get out of them, fingers crossed. They're going to go five because that's the warranty. I'll get new ones. But seven or eight years. If I could get eight years, I'd be consider myself lucky maybe. So, eight years. These batteries, the two of them together, are $1,000. Yep, $1,000. About $499 each, $500 each. When you take that $1,000 and divide it up in years, instead of the $40 a year ownership that you would have with a gas blower, you end up with something like $130 a year ownership. So just because you're saving money on gas does not mean that the cost of ownership per year is um, going to be a lot less. No, because these will have to be replaced anywhere between five and 10 years. Let's go eight. And uh, it's gonna cost you double or triple in the long run. You have to consider that. In between five and 10 years, you're gonna be spending $1,000 assuming the snowblower is still viable and you're not thinking of just getting a new snowblower. Well, I'm gonna go and, and clean the rest of this up and uh, thank you for watching. We had the square footage that I did. We had the amount of time that it took. And we had how much juice it took in the batteries and whether it was going to be viable for me to do this and it looks like if i have a really bad snowstorm that was much deeper i'll have no trouble getting through it i could do two to three of the snowstorms that i did um, with a foot of snow here with the with these batteries the way i ran it the machine worked really good it was as good or better than my gas model um, so I'm pleased with that. I hope this helps you make a decision. You may or may not decide to get something like this. As of now, this science experiment is still ongoing, but it's over for now as far as an overview of this machine. Thank you for watching, and if you would like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. It helps get stuff floating more to the top. Have a good winter.